Welcome everyone, Chris Petrie here. Thanks so much for coming by. Really happy you're here. We're actually going to be uh, creating a wonderful uh, sailing ship painting here. We're going to kind of, we're going to have this on camera the whole time. So you'll be able to have your reference photo set right here on the right hand side. We're going to also have the palette in view. Um, right now the palette is not in view, but you will have your palette. You'll see me mix my colors. You'll see the reference photo. We'll have our painting. We'll cover how you're going to get your sailboat here perfectly set in your rectangle right here. We have our rectangle. We'll cover how you, how you measure it just right to get it just perfect. Um, all the methods and techniques that you'll need to do that. And then we'll actually start the painting and we'll be, share with you all the colors we use. Limited palette, some black, a little bit of brown, some greens, touch of greens and purples. But for the most part, a very simple palette. We'll cover some techniques on how you use some of the water. Uh, some little bit of um, bit of water on your paper first and then you add in some paint to get some watery looking washes here and there and we cover some techniques too on how you're going to get your lines your rigging lines and how you're going to draw your mass nice and straight that's not easy most watercolor artists struggle with getting a straight line with their watercolor paintings I'm going to describe to you exactly how you get some beautiful straight lines in your watercolor paintings whether they're mass of ships or buildings or uh, flagpoles whatever it is um, I can show you how to do that. So you'll see that in this video too. So I'll cover a whole bunch of fun stuff here. Let's get started. All right, we just saw the finished painting. Let's get started. Right before I start though, I just wanted to mention, I have a new book out. It's been out for a while now, for almost a year. Watercolor Methods for Success. And the reason I bring this up is uh, it's on Amazon and I'll leave a link right below in the description. Uh, just below the uh, video here, you can look down in the bottom of the description. You'll see a, there's a link. You can go check it out. Um, very, very reasonably priced. The reason I mention it is because I have all of the details of my artwork and how I create my artwork, all the methods that I use, the techniques, all of the real tidbits of information you need that are really going to help you to get your watercolors really up to speed and even better. Um, I know many of you are already doing really well with your watercolors, but this can give you a real edge and a real uh, boost as far as knowledge. This is almost like a field manual, like or like, you know, if you have like, um, you're putting together something, like you, you buy something and you have to put it together. This is like the same thing. It kind of goes step by step and it shows you all the different things that I use to get to the end result of a finished painting that I might create. And I have really all of my tools that I use, my brushes, my pencils, pens, rulers. I cover the layout of your painting. So you'll understand like when I cover layout on my videos, this gets more in depth of how we do layout on our painting so that you make sure you have your your composition really set beautifully in your um, rectangle in your on your paper. So again, I'm, I'm really excited about this new book I have. I cover all of the tonal values so you can kind of see how you have a whole range of darks and lights you can utilize when you're doing your paintings and there's different patterns you can use in your paintings. You know, you can have a little bit of darks, uh, an average amount of darks and a lot of darks in your painting. And I cover all this information and as well as just, you know, practice techniques for your brushwork. So you have brush practice uh, sessions here to give you some really good brushwork. And then you just have wonderful oodles of gorgeous paintings you can work from, uh, flowers. We have boats, figures, portrait paintings. If you like portrait paintings, I cover it all here. We have such fun, interesting look at uh, seascapes, figures, lighthouses. We have beautiful seascapes and city scenes and um, more lighthouses we have. So this book is just chock full of beautiful artwork. Um, and when you go to Amazon, you'll see the link below in the description. So below in the description, you'll see my link to Amazon. You can go there, click on it. This book is extremely uh, inexpensive. It's reasonably priced and you can get all my best of my best artwork right there. You can take this book and you can work right from it and actually just open it up, put it on your table and you can just work uh, along with it and paint all of the paintings inside the book. And that'll really give you a, a real boost with your watercolor painting uh, skills. But in any case, we're going to keep working here on uh, this video and let's get started here. So we're going to do this um, beautiful sailboat again. And um, I just wanted to show you some of the photographs in my book and I'm really excited about my new book. So um, let's see now, this is about one third. So we're looking at a third, a third and a third. So we have three thirds. Let's just roughly do three thirds here. One third, two thirds, 
and three thirds. So that again is we're breaking our painting down into like uh, sections so that we can kind of think of it as um, how are we going to draw and paint this painting and the first third is going to be the bottom of our boat. So we'll take our pencil. I just wanted to get this in here, the divisions, the space divisions of one third, two thirds and three thirds. So you can kind of understand that that's the first thing I do is when I look at a photograph or if I'm outdoors and I'm painting, I'm looking at it and saying, how can I break it down into smaller parts so that I can kind of start getting it onto the paper in, in, in a real logical fashion. So here you have your first third is your boat. And then your second third is kind of like the upper portions of the um, mass and the sail. And then up top, you just have sky, beautiful sky. So again, we'll take that first third here. We have that hash mark and I'll just take a line and just go across just to give us that line. That's what we're gonna, where we're going to need to be for the sailboat. And then when we look at the sailboat, we're kind of looking and saying it really kind of spans right uh, in the center section of the um, paper. And again, you could you could take your paper and say, let's break this down to thirds again up here. One third, two thirds, and three thirds. You could say one third, two thirds here, and your three thirds here. And then you could say your, basically your sailboat is actually in the middle third right here. So we'll just take these lines. If you can imagine, you can even take a ruler and take a maybe take a ruler quickly and say all right let's do this let's transfer these down we'll kind of make a a plumb line a plumb line just means it's a perfectly straight line going down plumb plumb just means straight vertical perfectly vertical plumb line down and you can just plumb line down to there and then you can always just take a little eraser once you get your lines you can just lift up your lines like that with a, a kneaded eraser and then so now we have our middle third here so that's where we kind of see our sailboats right there in the middle section the middle third if we're talking about sectioning off our painting and that's really it you have the first third here for the bottom of the sailboat and the sailboat is actually its width is the middle thirds here the middle third here and then let's get started by adding the stern of that boat and again you're this is a fun loose painting so you don't have to worry about on making something perfect. A sailboat is a sailboat. It's all well, sailboats are beautiful to me and I really have a fun time creating them for you. And uh, you can kind of see this curves like this and it comes down like that. And that's basically it. That's the basic shape. You can kind of see it curves up a little bit like that there. And then we have a little bit of a um, bit of trim on the top of the boat like this almost looks like a stripe along the top and then we have um, we have the masts and I'm going to use a ruler for the masts I think um, now if I look across this boat here the top of the boat I'm just going to kind of make a couple little dots just to say where are these masts on this boat and if I look, the first one coming from the left to the right, it's pretty close to the back of the boat. Can you see that? So that's why I want to key in on this and say, okay, well, it's, that's pretty close to the back of the boat right there. So let me make that one here. So I'll just make a little hash mark there to start my mast there. Then I come up this way and say, well, how far is this mast? It's pretty far in from the bow of the boat, the front of the boat here. So I know it's going to be pretty close a fair amount in this way and maybe I can guesstimate that that one's there that mast is kind of there and this one is about here and then I look and I say hmm maybe I made this a touch long so I can shorten up and make the stern of the boat there and maybe make this mast over here a little more so I'm gonna push things over a little bit it's always fine to erase a little bit and kind of um, change things around a little bit. That's why we do it lightly. I'm sketching lightly. And I think that's fine. I think right where we have it looks good. 
Then I'm going to take this ruler and so I can get a really nice plumb line. And I notice that this mast is maybe, maybe a touch leaning to the left. So maybe this is perfectly straight. Uh, looks like it's kind of leaning just a touch to the left. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a light pencil line up there like so. And it goes up pretty high into the picture. And the same thing with this mast. This mast goes up equal distance, same all the way up, except it's actually leaning in a little bit too. So it's kind of, they're both leaning in a little bit toward the center. So we'll do that. We'll get this mast up there, leaning in a little bit like so. And I think that is pretty good. And I think I just want to do that. All right, so now we have the two masts in. Gorgeous. Looks good. Now, good. Looks good. Uh, let's come down here. Now, let's take another estimation of where is the bottom of this sail as compared to the top of the boat here. And we can see it's really close right there. That's only a little bit of space. So let's make our sail really close to the bottom of the boat. And it when it when the sail, um, when we start drawing our sail, how does it look? Is it going upwards? Is it going downwards? Is it going straight level? So you can imagine, is the is the bottom of the sail going straight level? Is it going up a little bit, pitched up, or is it kind of tilting down? And if I look at this photograph of this painting, I'm noticing it is going slightly up. So that's what we're going to want to do here. We're going to want to make this go slightly up like that. How far out from the bottom of the boat is the sail? At least twice the amount. The sail is twice the amount out from this mast from the stern of the boat. It's even a little more than twice the size of the stern of the boat. So if this is the stern of the boat here, and I put my finger there as a mark, so I say that's one um, that's one length of this back of the stern from the mast to the stern, right where my pointer finger is, my nail of my pointer finger, my index finger, is there. I have to go at least one and then a little more than that. So right now I'm at one and two. I need to go a little more like that. And that's how I get my dimension, my measurement going out, out this way for the bottom of my sail. Now, when it comes to where is this uh, sail uh, here on the mass, where does it stop and then start to angle up? So let's take a look and we'll say it's almost two thirds of the way up. So if we break this mast into thirds and we might say this is one third, two thirds, three thirds, so it's kind of working the same as it did for our layout of our original um, part of our painting when we first started on getting our sailboat set on the in the rectangle. Now we're kind of looking and saying, how is this sail looking? And, it, and we can kind of see it's a little more than two thirds, one third, two thirds, a little bit more than. So if we take this line here and say, Let's create thirds on this line. You can even measure it if you feel like you can't get maybe a feel for thirds by just eyeing it, you know, using your eyesight and just looking and saying, you know, breaking it in three parts. You, you could always measure it and say, okay, well, that's about 12 inches. So 12 inches broken into, or centimeters, broken into three, 12 centimeters broken into three uh, divisions is four, eight, 12. So four. So that would be the third there, and then uh, the eight is here. Or you can use inches, of course. So, you know, if you have one, two, three centimeters, uh, kind of are a little quicker for me to use. So I use the centimeters here, but you can use inches or centimeters. But we, you can see how we got the third marks on this mast. And... Um, I think we're going to take a break right right after we get completed with this mask because there's a lot of <laughs> we're talking about a lot of different things here as far as layout and design and getting our drawing just right but i know you want to do that i know you want to get your drawing really solid and looking good so if you're just following along with me and i know you are um you're just going to have a, a fun time here and just you know in, enjoy the process of getting the drawing done you know accurately 
we could sh sure we could just do this by eye and just kind of go in and draw it and sort of get it somewhat close. But if we're using these um, techniques of just kind of breaking things down, measuring a little bit if you have to, or just, you know, if you have a, a really good eye for things, you know, you might be able to break, thing down, break things down into thirds or, or quarters. But in any case, uh, it's all fine. You use whatever method or technique you want to use to get your measurements. But that's what I'm doing here. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm saying, all right, now, how do we get this angle for the mast? We notice the mast is a little bit above two thirds. So if this is a third here, one third, two thirds, it's a little bit above two thirds. So we'll go a little higher, make another dot. And then we'll say, how do we get this angle correct? So you can always take your pencil or your pen or even a ruler. It might be more, if I use a ruler, you might be able to kind of see how I'm doing this. Well, I think the pencil is going to work better. I'll take my pencil and line up the angle like this. And then what I do is I just take my pencil and I, I really just keep the same angle. And I bring it over here. And then I do this. And I kind of have that angle. Like that. So you can kind of get an angle by just holding it over your subject matter and then just bringing it over like that. You'll get a much better accurate angle doing it that way than just looking at it and saying, oh, I think it's kind of angled this way. And then you might make it really way too low or way too straight up high. So I find this is the best and I've seen many professional artists do it this way. So that's why I do it this way. I've really kind of made it a point to really follow the best artists I can and see and watch what they do when they're painting live in workshops and things like that. And I always notice they take their pencils and they use the angle and say they hold the pencil up, get the angle, and then they just slide their hand over like this and drop it on the paper and then get their, maybe they use their fingers to get their, to keep that angle correct. And they use their, and then you, they make the mark like that. So that really helps a lot. So now we have that angle almost perfect like that. Okay. And then this drapes down. How far over is that? How wide is that? We could look at this and say, well, how wide is th this part of the sail? And we could maybe come over here and say, maybe from the, the very, very tip of the bow of the boat over to the first uh, mast. That's about the tip of the pencil, my mechanical pencil. Now, if I go over here, how much is that? It's not quite as wide as that. So if I come up here and say, all right, here's the amount of from here to the end of the pencil is where the mast is. That's the width. This should be not as wide as this, a little bit less wide. So if I go over here and do this and say, well, it's about maybe there, then I can sort of see where I could just make a dot and go, that's about where that should be. And it goes a little bit on an angle out like that. And there you have it. You have your sail. And it kind of fuses beautifully right in with the mast. And then you can make another couple minor indications of some uh, rigging lines over to the mast. And we'll do that with the brush later. And then uh, we'll, we'll do some rigging lines later with our brush. We're not really going to do it so much with pencil lines. I think we can do it without. And uh, okay, so now we have our two masts. We have our sail over here. We have a um, boom over here that goes across and over here like that. And what else do we have here? Let's, okay, we're going to have some rigging lines this way. So I'm just going to put a couple indications of a couple pencil lines just to mention, uh, make a note for myself. I need to make some, some lines up here, some very, very light indications of some rigging lines for the masts and the sails. And what else do we have? We have the reflections underneath the boat. 
that. And then we have the masts, the reflections of the mast like that, very loose. The reflections of the sail, again, very loose and uh, hit and miss. And as you can see, um, we have completed our sketch. We have everything we really need. We'll make a few more rigging lines just so that we know. We're going to make a few more rigging lines. But right now we do have a good solid feel for this with our pencil sketch. So let's take a break. We'll come back next and paint this. And again, I'm so excited that you're really, all of you are coming along beautifully with your pencil sketching and your layout and your design portion of what we're doing here and then taking your time and getting these um, details correct as you start out your painting because really that's the key. If you can start out your painting correctly with your pencil lines and kind of get a really good representation of what you're seeing here and carefully see things as they are. You know, we did those hash marks again so that you have that. You're really going to be um, way ahead of the game because Again, uh, I know when I first started watercolor, I used to try to just sort of kind of eye everything and I really didn't take the time. But then once I started watching a lot of professional artists, watercolor artists, when they were drawing and painting, I noticed they did use a lot of trying to really accurately get things down on their sketch when they were drawing. And the way they did that was they did use their pencil a lot. So whatever kind of pencil, this is a mechanical pencil, great pencil. I use this all the time at work and... I use it for artwork as well, too. And, um, you know, this is, uh, you use it, the pencil, you get things, you know, plumb is straight like this. We got the angle by just holding the pencil and then just bringing it over like that and dropping on the paper. And then we can kind of see how you can get some angles. You can get some level marks here like this by coming over and kind of seeing, is this level? Maybe it's a little angle here. Maybe this comes out on a little bit of an angle that way. You know, so by checking out your lines, your plumb lines, your level lines in your drawing first. Wow, you're really going to have a, a great drawing when you're done uh, versus just trying to draw it like um, by just looking at it and saying, oh, I'm just going to try to draw it and work it out that way. So there is that professional, accurate way to get it a little bit more accurate than maybe just trying to eyeball it and check it, you know, just try to go in there and get it done. So that's the only thing I, I mentioned here is that's why I kind of talk about these details a little bit more about what I'm doing so that you kind of really understand my philosophy and my uh, thoughts on things when it comes to drawing and getting that first portion of your drawing done accurately. Because if you can get this in accurately, then, you, then it's all fun from here. You'll see we're going to have so much fun painting this. So let's get started. I'll just take a quick break for five minutes and then I'll come back and we'll start painting this uh, beautiful scene of this gorgeous sailboat. Lots of uh, fun reflections there. We have some gorgeous blacks, browns, greens, and blues. Some uh, burnt sienna there for the mass and some grays for the sail and some reflections in the water. This is going to be really fun to do. You're going to do a great job at this, I know. It's kind of um, just a real, this is a dream uh, kind of painting for a watercolor artist. It's like all the things you love, water, the ocean, the reflections, the simple palette. You know, nothing too crazy with colors, just some nice, simple, um, simplified palette colors and uh, just getting it done quickly, doing a nice sketch, a nice composition here, having fun with it. And if it comes out great, I want you to put it in a frame, please. <laughs> put a mat on it, put it in a frame if this comes out good, okay? All right, so let's come back in just a minute and we'll get started painting. All right, so let's get started with the painting portion. Now I'm going to take my uh, my water bucket and bring it over here next to my uh, setup here. So I have an, um, a collapsible Holbein uh, water container. These are really fantastic water containers. You can bring them out in the field if you want. You fold them up and collapse them down. You squash them down. And then you can pull them back out again and you can expand them like this so they can open up and then you can squeeze them down like that and put them into the backpack or your whatever. They're great. Uh, these are my favorite water buckets. So I have this over here on the right hand side and then I have a, um, I dampened up a uh, small kitchen sponge that I just dampened up and I put that next to my water bucket. And this way I can take 
my brush and then when I dip it and clean my brush in the water I can dab it on the sponge to take some of the water off the brush because too much water on your brush is really going to give you a problem in watercolor. So that's the kind of thing I always think about is when you're painting you want to kind of really, one of the absolute most critical things with watercolor is controlling how much water is in your brush actually. And um, th that'll be like one of the critical things you'll notice as you work in watercolor. And if you're just starting out, welcome. I don't know if you're just starting here and this is the first time you're seeing my video, welcome. Please, um, I hope you'll stick with me and keep watching. We do great videos every week and week after week, month after month, and year after year, we're always creating new videos with watercolor and we're covering all kinds of subject matter, boats, seascapes, landscapes, portrait paintings. We do everything here. <clears throat> but the thing I wanted to mention is you'll always hear me talk about this. And so I, I'm always mentioning it that, you know, it's key to kind of keep the in check your the water that's in your brush hairs. Uh, this happens to be a tra uh, Charles Reed travel brush. I use these all the time. These are great brushes, beautiful hairs on the brush. You can take them and you can take them out in the field and just put them into the, they kind of, you know, go together in the tube like that and you can put these in your pocket. There's a little hole in the top so it dries the air, it, the brush hairs dry, air dry from the hole in the top of the um, travel brush and then you can take it out and put it together like this so you can work with it and then you can again stow it in your pocketbook, your purse, your pockets of your shirt, in your bag, your whatever you're using if you go out and do a little bit of painting outdoors. Great brushes and they are and they have beautiful points on them too. And they come in a three pack, so you have different variations of size. So, but again, I wanted to mention, keep a check on your water and your, um, it's real important to try to, um, when you rinse your brush off, always try to have a sponge next to your, um, your water pail, or if you want, you can just have a tissue, or if you can wear an apron, you just dab your brush on your apron, or you can take your brush, rinse off your brush, and then dab it on a piece of tissue or paper towel, just to take a little bit of water off. And then you can come over to your palette and work in your palette and mix a little bit and do what you have to do over here in your palette. But that's that's one of the critical things I do mention. So we'll do that. We'll rinse off the brush. I'll dab a little bit of water off on the sponge here. And I'll go in and I'll say, all right, what colors are we going to start with? And we kind of noticed this was a limited palette. Nothing. There's not a huge array of colors. So let's let's just kind of go in and we'll, we'll definitely notice we do see some black. So I'm going to use some ivory black here. I'll get some of that black out on the palette. And uh, what else do I see? I see a little bit of um, purple. So I notice I see purple in that um, mix. Um, so I want to make sure I have plenty of black and then some purple mixed in there too. And then I also notice I see some green. I see some viridian green. So I'll put some viridian, viridian green down there. Viridian which is like a turquoise green, beautiful color. I see that. I see a little bit of um, maybe some, uh, I see some, mm, what is that? That Yeah, that's like the sap green. So I put some sap green out here too, and then viridian, and then of course purple, and then I'm using ivory black. So that's kind of like the first colors I'm seeing right along here in the bottom of the uh, boat, uh, the uh, hull of the boat. And then I'm seeing burnt umber. Let's move some burnt umber up here. So I'm hoping that uh, my colors are looking... Okay, they look fine. I'm looking at the camera now. My camera uh, is showing me that my colors are all looking fine. There's no glare or anything on my palette, which sometimes can be a problem. I apologize if my palette sometimes has glare and you can't see everything uh, uh, really well. I'm trying to work on keeping focused on everything I'm doing here at one time. So that's the burnt umber for the masts. So you can kind of see it is a simple palette of colors. So I think we have everything we need right now to do this. So what I think I will do is I'm going to kind of go in a very, um, let's see, I'm going to move my water bucket over a little bit this way. And I'm going to move my sponge over here underneath my water bucket there so I have a place to rest my hand here so I can kind of work a little bit easier with my hand on the my working board. I have my um, working board here and I kind of mentioned this actually I just did a video I'm hoping you'll check out my video I just it's called um, uh, it's uh, I think the name of it is the video is um, 
important information uh, on watercolor uh, boards and working surfaces. Um, so I kind of cover like how you use a board and you set up a really good board that you can work on on top of for your watercolor so that you always have a place to rest your hand um, and work on the board. You can tape your watercolor paintings down on your board and I use usually either foam or masonite board. I happen to cover this for YouTube videos. I cover my board with um, some construction paper, but th that's a really important thing. Uh, have a good board, a nice uh, rigid board so that it's not bending or bowing or moving around. But let's get started here. So let's go in with some really beautiful, rich black color. And uh, I'm going to use the point of my brush here and just really kind of get that first bit of color there like that and you'll see I'm going to use plenty of black here straight black paint right out of the palette not too much water hard I just have a damp brush actually I didn't really I'm just using a damp brush right now with the paint the fresh squeeze to paint I'm not you know I'm really keeping this lots of rich color then I'll get a little bit of that purple and lighter tonal value mixed with ivory black and purple to kind of start working and developing underneath this here, this area. Like that. You can kind of see how it's a little lighter under there. And uh, so right there, you've got a large, I started with the darkest dark. That's the, I think that's really great with the, uh, we're doing a la prima painting right now. And a la prima basically is you're just painting the painting all at one time. And you're actually starting with the darkest darks first. And then you, you work the other lighter lights last. So you'll notice I'm going to start, I'm going to start my painting now and kind of work with that same idea of darkest darks first right here. Darkest darks first, and then um, I use the very tippy point of my brush to kind of get these few little reflections like that, and that is good. I'm not messing around too much and taking too much time with uh, details or overworking things. And then now I notice here, that's a burnt umber along that top rail there. And maybe there's a little bit of purple in there too. Let's see. Let's get some purple here. Oh, wow. That's a lot of purple. Let's do it over. Let's go over here. Lighten that up a little bit. Burnt umber. Let's do this. Let's take a little bit of the purple here, bring it up here, and then we can come up like that. And then we can do this like that. And then take a little more ivory black and just try to, I'm trying to copy exactly what I see here as best I can. And then back here it gets a little more, we'll put some greens in there. I see some green and some burnt umber there. All right, so you kind of see how I've worked this. And then I get some more darker black. You can charge in some darker black there, like that. And there's a little bit of a, some more reflections under there, like so. And again, less is more. We're not gonna spend a ton of time working on this painting. Let's get the basic essence of what we're doing here completed and some that's what we're looking to do some basic essence of what we're seeing here and then we have 
have some just some waving effects like that. We'll come back later and maybe do some work over here later. Um, this wash got a little bit out of control here with some smudging and some blossoming and um, we'll go over this with another wash once it dries to kind of fix that up a little bit. You can kind of see I added too much water there. Um, so we will fix that. Now let's go in, we'll do some burnt umber and uh, maybe some ivory black mixed with that too. Like that. So ivory black and uh, burnt umber. And then what I'll do is I'll start to work my um, my masts. Now when I do my masts, um, sometimes the easiest way to do a straight line is to do it in small pieces. I think that's the best way to do it. So I rest my hand on the paper. I make sure I don't lean into any paint that's on my paper. So I know I don't have any paint up here at all. It's dry, the paper, so I can rest my hand right up here. And then I'm just going to look at that and say, okay, I just need to... Um, and I, I use, I dry off my brush a little bit on a tissue to make sure I don't have too much paint on there. And then I just, you can kind of see, I'm doing this. I'm just getting a little bit of that mass color on there. And then as it comes down here, I'm going thicker. So I'm making the mast wider as it goes down toward the bottom of the boat. Like that. There we go. Let's do the same thing over here. I have my hand resting on the paper. And I go a little bit at a time. So instead of trying to go all the way like this with one brush stroke to get the line, you can get a really beautiful straight line by just kind of following your pencil, following our pencil line we did before. And you can even skip a little bit like that. Perfect. Look at that. You know, you can leave a little bit of light bouncing where you don't see some of the mass. That's fine, too. And uh, now we can do the mass over here. We have it drawn in with our pencil, so we can just grab that. Uh, grab that grayish color for the mass over here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to dry lighter. So if it's a little bit dark looking, don't worry. It will dry lighter. Usually your watercolor will dry about 50% lighter than when you're putting it on. So if you put it on a little bit dark, you'll be fine. There we go. Look at how good that looks. And then a couple splashes like that. You can blot up your splashes if you don't like them. See, you can make them disappear like that, or you can leave them in. And um, what else do we have? We have some more of the sails rolled up over here on the front of the boat. And again, we talked about we had some of the booms across here on the uh, boat. And there's some more mast there. And that's the fun of watercolor. You can kind of get your your colors going really nicely. You can add a little. I noticed there's a a little bit of color over here. It looks like a bit of some sail, maybe there. And then maybe we'll get a little burnt umber and ivory black just to get our I may be adding this in a little bit this portion here that I, I kind of make up some things too as I go so I I make up a, you know or I sometimes you know take artist liberty and create a little extra few things on my paintings that might not be there in the uh, reference photograph and I want you to do the same thing too sometimes you can add things in or leave things out if you like so and I'm going to try to fix that up a little bit. You noticed how before it looked really... So I think whenever you go in to fix anything up, you're better off just using straight paint and not any water. Or you let it dry 100%. So this is still a little bit damp.
Okay, let's let this dry now. So we've done a lot of work so far. Let's not get carried away. We've done, you know, probably, we've just been working now for 15 minutes or so. That's when you can take a quick break, relax for like five, 10 minutes, and then you come back and you get started again. So we're, I would say we're like, you know, 75% complete now. All we really have to do is get our reflections in the water here. You can kind of see the reflections we penciled in a little bit before. We have to get that uh, completed with a little bit of some water lines, you know, some kind of current and a little bit of wavy water lines in there is going to look good, you know. And But then other than that, I think we have everything covered other than maybe we have to do a couple rigging lines. So we'll do some really light grayish looking uh, colors for the rigging lines of this beautiful sailing ship and and then we'll be all set we'll have a completed painting and again please put a mat on your painting and put it in a frame if it comes out good it doesn't have to be great but if it comes out how good and you're happy with it then then put it in a frame put a mat on it and put it in a frame and you know hang it up you could even take a picture of it and blow it up and make it larger go you know you can bring it to a print shop and make it a larger print of it and make it a larger print and then put it on the wall, put it in a frame. You know, you can have creative things like that too that you can do. Sometimes it looks really great if you enlarge something and make it, a, you know, you take a smaller painting, you paint this, take a photograph with your phone, and then you take that uh, photograph, you bring it to a print shop and say, can you make like a 18 by 24 painting of this for me? And they'll take it and they'll print it out on a printer in the uh, print shop and voila, you have a beautiful larger print and it kind of just gets you excited about your watercolors and, you know, you hang it up on the wall. Maybe you bring it in, you give it as a gift to somebody, whatever it is. Have fun with your watercolors, share it with people uh, also too. Um, and then you also, uh, you know, kind of um, give yourself a pat on the back and put up a couple paintings on the walls in your house or tape them up on the refrigerator. And remember that, you know, it's a long journey. Watercolor, you can't do it overnight. You're never going to be really good painting for just like one or two years it takes many years to get really really good but your first couple of years you can make a lot of progress and do some really good painting so don't ever underestimate yourself i'm sure you're all doing a beautiful job and i commend everybody for the hard work you put into doing your watercolors and uh so let's take a quick break again i always take some breaks and then we'll um come back in a few minutes or so all right so let's finish up here and um, I would say that um, right now, I think I'm going to empty the water. So I change out the water maybe two or three times during a painting. So I'll, I'll empty the water now and I'll put in some fresh, clean water. So right now you can kind of see we have a few things to complete. Now for these reflections in the water... I'm going to actually wet the paper a little bit um, over here on the left side where these bits of wash are over here. I think I want to wet the paper just a little bit. So I'm going to dampen up the paper there in a few spots like that. Nothing major. Just take a damp brush with some water in it and add some water. And I might do the same thing over here. Just a few spots over here though. Just a few tiny bits of damp paper over here. And I think that's that's good enough. Um, so let's get these in here, some of this here. So we're going to have some ivory black with a little bit of that purple. And then mostly ivory black. And I kind of wish I made this a little bit lighter. It did, it did kind of, it, look, it looks a little bit maybe darker than I think I would have liked it. But, but that's fine. Um, you can always, maybe we'll try to lighten this up a little bit. Maybe we'll see if we can lighten that up a little bit. But anyway, let's... Get some of that like this here. Just like that. Have fun with it. Then we take, um, what's really important right now is always remember if you start mixing some really wet washes over here, but then you need some darker darks like these reflections of the masts of the sailboat down in the water. You're probably going to have to dry up your palette a little bit like that and take some of those wet or puddly washes and then sort of um, dry off your palette in a, in a section and then dry off your brush again and then go in and get some paint 
straight paint though, no water at all. And then you might put in a little bit of brown, a little bit of purple in there, just to kind of give it a little bit of a change in color, just a little bit. And then you can kind of see You can kind of start doing the mast like that, and then this one too. And then we can do a couple little water spots like this. Like that. You lift up like that. That's basically the reflection down in the water here of the mast. And then like I said before, you could try to lighten this up a little bit. I'm going to add some damp water over here on the left side of this sail. I'm going to add some damp water there. Then I'm going to see if I can take my, my tissue and blot up some of the sail over here like this. And see if I can blot up a little bit of that paint. Uh, not so much. It's not lightening up too much, but we could maybe darken it up a little bit over on this side. That might work too. Add a little bit of a darker bit of wash over here. And that makes it look lighter over on this side, on the, le on the left side. Like that. That looks good. Okay, now we're almost completed. Uh, maybe we'll do another little, I see a line or two across here like that. You could do a few creative lines like this for water. You know, I'm adding a few little extra zips of paint just to make it look interesting, artistic looking. Then I'll, um, I'll move my paint over just a little bit so I have some more room to work with my hand resting on the paper over here. And I'll actually, again, dry off, rinse off my brush, dry off the water out of my brush on a tissue, and then I'll come over here and I'll get some of that paint. So it's a very... I'm going to dry off some of that paint off the tip of the brush, and then I'm just going to get some of these lines in. So here, let's see where they are. There, there's a couple over here like this. So I'm just going to do a little bit at a time like that. One, like that. Like the one there. Maybe there's another one here, like so. Another one here, like that. Like that. And there's a couple up here, too. And I think we have... This is perfect. Maybe we add a little burgee up top. And a couple cross members up there, and I'm very I'm very happy with this. I, I think it does. Maybe I'll add just a few more darks. You can take some really really dark paint, grab some burnt. Uh, this is uh, ivory black, and you can take a couple and make some darks like that. Put a couple darks in there. A couple really nice darks of spots of dark color. that and what that does is it kind of balances the painting out if you can have a couple darks maybe even up here you can do a few just kind of sneak in a couple really really nice straight ivory black just in a few spots not much though we can't overdo it but it kind of balances the painting out if you can get a couple of the really dark darks in here like that. And maybe even a couple over here, maybe one over here.
maybe a little bit of some color some viridian a couple splashes of viridian there But overall, I think this looks fine. I'm really happy you joined me here to do this painting. It's a sailboat. It's a fun painting to do. It's kind of straightforward. Nothing. The, the most important part, as you recall, was the um, drawing in the beginning. So um, let's focus on that. If you have to go back and do it, do another try at this. If you're not happy with the results, if your drawing didn't come out as good as you want, not a problem. Uh, start again, grab an another fresh piece of uh, watercolor paper or flip this paper over. You can take your watercolor paper if you're painting doesn't turn out good you can always flip your paper over and create another one just like the same as this one here you start out again and you go through the process of um, breaking your painting downs your painting down into like sections like we did thirds uh, on the vertical and the horizontal lines and you get your boat uh, your sailing ship here right perfect the way you want it take your time get those um, lines correct get your uh, your scale correct on all of your components of your boat and you'll be absolutely happy with the results. And again, a lot of times it's just a matter of practicing things over and over again. I probably painted, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these sailboats already now since I've been painting 15 years or more as a professional artist. So if you're just starting out, you know, don't worry about it. You know, paint as many as you need to do to kind of get a couple really good solid sailboats in uh, where you can kind of, you know, again, put them in a frame and or put them in and, you know, keep them pinned up on the wall. The ones that come out good, that's really important to do. You know, kind of uh, keep your your best paintings kind of, you know, in front of you. Put them up on the wall. The ones that don't turn out so good, no big deal. You kind of put those in a folder and you just say, you know what, those are ones I learned some good things from. You'll probably learn something new from every painting you do. That's the critical part. You will. You will learn uh, new things each time you're creating a painting. That's a guaranteed. So... Thanks again so much for coming by and painting with me. We had a lot of fun together. Always remember, if you want to follow along with me each week as we paint, you can subscribe on the right-hand side below. You just click on the subscribe button. The only thing that that does is it just will let you know. Uh, YouTube will kind of just let you know that I've created a new video. The next time my next video comes out, it'll kind of send it to your YouTube homepage. That's all it does. There's no other obligations or you're not going to get any emails or text messages or anything like that. It's just, you know, YouTube's really uh, great where they want you to, if you like an artist, if you like my work, they want to make sure you're going to see my videos as I make new ones. So you won't lose me and forget or forget how to find me or whatever, you know, so that's just a great thing. Okay. So uh, again, happy painting, everybody. Enjoy the journey. It's a lot of fun. We're all together in this. I'm getting better all the time. You're getting better all the time. Let's just keep the, uh, Keep things going, uh, you know, positively, uh, you know, keep the positivity going and we'll see you on the next video. Again, thanks so much for coming by.